Hello and welcome back to SciTi Tech. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make an EMF meter that could be able to measure electromagnetic fields from any type of electronics. And you can make this by using a few simple components. Main component is the AT Mega 328 microcontroller. Let's get started. <laughs> In a previous video, I showed you how to use the bar graph code in the Arduino to make an EMF meter, but now I want to put it on a perf board. And these are the items that you're going to need to make for this project. The items you're going to need is this 18 mega 328 microcontroller, a 16 megahertz crystal oscillator, two 22 nanofarad ceramic capacitors, a 10k ohm resistor, a push button switch, and a 28 pin IC socket holder. Now you go ahead and attach it all to the perf board and it should look just like this. Now, as you can see, this is what a basic Arduino would look like on a perf board. In a previous video, I showed you how to make an Arduino on a perf board. You can go ahead and click on the link in the description or click on the annotation card to see how to do that. But here's a speed up view of making an Arduino on a perf board. After making the Arduino on a perf board, these will be the items that you'll need to make the EMF meter. The items you're going to need is 10 220 ohm resistors, 10 LEDs, which will be four greens, three yellows, and three reds. And you're going to need a nine volt battery clip and a phone charger that you would use to charge your phone in your car. But we're going to need to modify this circuit because I want to use a 9 volt battery and step down the 9 volt battery voltage to 5 volts. So 9 volt battery can be stepped down into this circuit, which will then function with this Arduino circuit, which uses only 5 volts. And finally, you're going to need to use this thick wire, which will be the antenna to sense the EMFs. First, I want to start with connecting these LEDs to this circuit. And what I want to do is I want to connect the anodes closest to the circuit and connect all the cathodes all in line for the ground. So that way they all connect to the common ground. Place them in just like this. Solder one pin into place. And as you can see, all of the LEDs are uneven. So what I want to do is melt the one solder point and push them against the board so that way it's flush with the board, just like this. That's why I only soldered one pin. There we go, just like that. And there we go, should be all soldered into place, just like that. Now, solder the second pin into place, and now complete the solder. There we go, just like that. Next, I want to go and bend all of the cathodes and put them all into this direction and then solder them all together. So then that way they can all connect to the common ground. Bend them all over just like this. Solder them together just like this. And there we go, should look just like that. Cut off the excess. Next, what I want to do is take this negative wire and connect it to the common cathodes. Solder it into place and connect it to the cathodes. And there we go, should look just like this. Now I want to take this wire and connect it to the common ground. So that way all the LEDs are grounded with the rest of the circuit. There we go, grounded just like that. Next, I'm going to take all of my resistors and place them next to the LEDs just like this. Now what I'm going to do is solder them all into place. There we go, just like that. Cut off the excess.
Next, I want to go and solder bridge all of the anodes of the LEDs to the resistors. There we go, just like that. Next, I'm going to take each of these resistors and connect them to their own outputs of the ATmega 328 microcontroller. And I'm going to do that by using these wires that I have specifically measured to connect to all of the resistors to all of the necessary pins of the ATmega. Resistor to the first pin, which is considered pin 2 on Arduino. And there we go, the first resistor is soldered to pin 2 of the AT Mega. And there you have it, all of them are now soldered together. So I'm going to solder this antenna wire to pin 23 of the AT Mega, which is considered analog 0 of the Arduino. There we go, solder it into place just like that. And there you have it, it should look just like this. Everything is now soldered into place, and now my circuit is ready to go. Now, let's give some power to the circuit by using this car phone charger. Put everything to the side, and now let's go ahead and work on the car phone charger. I need to open it up and begin to modify it. And there we go, it should look just like this. Okay, so now this part here I don't need, so I'm gonna remove it. I'm gonna connect the battery's negative to here and the battery's positive to here. And then the output would be ground, same ground shared. And this dot right here is the five volts. Next, I'm gonna take a wire and solder it to the negative terminal of the circuit. There we go, just like that. And then solder it to the negative terminal of the battery holder. Next, I'm gonna take another wire and solder it to the positive terminal of the circuit. And then solder it to the positive terminal of the battery holder. And there you go, should look just like this. Now let's go test it out. Ah, the LED lights up, which means it works. Next, I need to combine these two circuits together. And I'm going to do that with using these two wires. Blue wire is the negative, and I'm going to solder that to the common cathode. This yellow wire is positive, and I'm going to solder that to the common anode. And there we go, solder the negative to this negative terminal. Just like this. Next, I'm going to take the positive wire and solder it to the 5 volts VCC, which is the output. And there, the circuit is now complete. Now what I need to do is put some hot glue to be able to glue the second circuit to this circuit. There we go, glued into place just like that. And now I'm going to take my battery and test it out. But first, I'm going to take the ATmega and connect it to its socket. There, now the circuit is complete. And there we go, just like that. Your project is now complete. Now let's go ahead and connect the battery and test it out. Ah, excellent, it's working. Right now it's picking up the EMF from my camera. Interesting. And now it's time to test it out. Now I'm gonna see if my device can pick up an EMF from my soldering iron. And as you can see, it does. Very good. Let's see what else it can sense. How about this wall adapter? Oh, it works really well. Let's see what else it can sense. My lap bench power supply. And my phone. Oh, pretty good. Very sensitive with the phone. And now on my arm. As you can see, nothing. Well, that's until I rub it and it charges static electricity, which then works. There, see? Now it's starting to work because I rubbed the wire on my arm which caused a static electricity which then creates an EMF. And now I've discharged my arm and now I have no EMFs. Until I rub my arm to create static electricity which will then create an electromagnetic field. There we go. Ah, it works. 
And there you have it. Now you know how to make your very own EMF detector device with using an 18 mega 328 microcontroller and using a car phone charger for the power and a few other components as well. And there you have it. Thank you for watching SciTai Tech. I hope you learned something new and don't forget to like and subscribe and of course click on the bell icon to be notified for future SciTai Tech videos. Till the next tech, goodbye.